Hello, this is Bruce White with Sterling Systems. Today we're going to go through Leica 3DR and show you how to process ground DTM and cross sections. So the first step is going to be going into and launching Leica 3DR, creating a new project, and then dragging and dropping, in this case, an LGS file. Um, more specifically, an LGSX file from Register360. As soon as you drop the file in, you have two options, either import file or convert file. I prefer to just import the file because when you do that, then all the functions in the CloudWorks menu will work. So we can go to CloudWorks and if you wanna say, turn on intensity mapping, you can do it straightforward that way and it it's reacts quite quickly. Now what we're going to do is select the point cloud and say convert project, which will make essentially a secondary um, point cloud in our project tree. But that's what we need for most of the 3DR functions to work correctly. We're going to increase the number of points and then tell it OK. This conversion, depending on the size of your file, can take a little bit of time to process, so I'm going to speed it up so we're not waiting. Now that the conversion is done, we're going to select the point cloud, go up to clean, and then auto classification. And this will separate out all the ground from the trees and the buildings, etc. So if we if we take a look at the point cloud before we do that, you can see that we have all kinds of trees and bushes and and now we're gonna go back and select the point cloud and then go ahead and do the auto classification. Now you have different uh, current models that you can select, indoor, outdoor, etc. And we're going to use outdoor and allow that to process. This function again is going to take a little bit of time to process, so I'll uh, speed up this part of it. Now the computer's finished classifying the data, so all the building, the vegetation, the ground is all separate. And what we need to do is explode by class. That'll put all the individual components into the project tree so that we can turn them on and off. So to start with, we'll turn them all on. There's all the different pieces and then we can slowly turn them back off. There's the hardscape, the artifacts, buildings are now off, and now vegetation. That leaves us the ground. If we take a look at the results, we're gonna go ahead and turn on real color, and we can see that there's some really low bushes that are still in the data set. So we're going to use a second function. We're going to pick the point cloud and then go up to split ground points and make sure that it's flat. And we're going to um, check the noisy points, and then hit OK. Now that it's completed with that, let's take a look at our ground. There's a few um, separations, again, that we need to turn off, unclassified cloud and um, noise cloud. And that leaves just the ground. So I'll take a look at it. A little QA, QC, make sure that it looks okay. Because you can rerun the auto classification or the split ground points again if you want. But 
but the data is looking pretty good here so I think we're going to go ahead and move forward and go over to surface modeling and DTM we're going to change the slope down a little bit again we'll check for noisy points and hit OK. Let's take a look at our um, DTM. If we select the ground cloud, let's see how many points there are. There's 53,655,000 points left on uh, the ground. So we're going to turn that off. This is the actual DTM itself in a rendered view. So we can right mouse button click and go to representation and then wire. That'll show the actual you know, tin or DTM surface modeling. And here we went into clean and separate and then we can just select all the um, triangles that are really just shouldn't be there. And we're just going to go around here and then hit delete. That gets rid of them all. Got a little bit there at the bottom. And it takes a minute to do this, as it does with all software that generates DTMs or TINs. And for that matter, for the most part, a TIN and a DTM. Um, TIN is triangulated irregular network, and DTM is digital train model. Um, both of them basically are the same. It's estimating the ground by connecting neighboring points together with triangles so that in anywhere that the tin or the DTM covers an area it can tell you what the elevation is or, or the coordinates. We just have a couple of areas to finish up here. You can get as detailed as you want on it. But your contours will usually look a little funny on the edges if you don't clean these up. And again, that regardless of whatever software you're using. It is important to note that you have to hit OK at the end of that to accept all the erasures that you did. Now we just take a little close look at the DTM and we're going to go ahead and generate contours here in a moment. And that would be under the extract menu. And then create or, uh, contour lines. So we're doing one foot contours, uh, majors at five foot intervals. Um, the thickness of both lines, the color of lines, so one foot contours are green, uh, the majors are red, and now we're going to hit OK. And, and it will uh, pop them in. There we go. And if we turn off the mesh, then we can see the actual contours that look pretty good. Turn our cloud back on. There we have the mesh 
ground mesh and the cloud point cloud on top with the contours all together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a polyline and we're going to pick on the point cloud and just put in a rough center line here so that we can do some cross sections. I select the two points then hit enter to accept and essentially escape to get out of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick the, the mesh and the polyline at the same time. So I'm looking for the polyline. There it is. So we're going to select that. And then we're going to multi-select the ground mesh. And now we can go up to profile extraction, which is under the analysis menu. So those are already done. We're going to do 3D. Um, the offset is whether in relationship to the start of the alignment that you do, we're doing vertical. So we're going to hit next. And then we can say we want every 25 feet, for instance, regular intervals. And you can insert those and all the numbers show up here. And let's go ahead and add uh, a couple extras. So if we put in, say, 35 foot, then a semicolon, and then 45 foot, it just added those two in there. You can even pick along the line too if you want to do it visually. But then we're going to hit next. Then we're going to talk about the actual cross sections. Right now it's set for 10 meters. And we're going to say compute. And the bottom thing there is, is that it's kind of a grid looking. So there's our cross sections extracted. We'll hit next again. And now it'll add in all the the grid lines and so forth and the labels to make it a little more complete. And then we're going to hit DXF and that's for the cross sections. We're going to go store those. We exit the command and now that they're stored, we're going to go ahead and bring up BricsCAD, which is a um, essentially an AutoCAD clone. And as you can see, it will run exactly like AutoCAD. It just at a far, far lower price point. And yes, Sterling Systems does carry BricsCAD. It's actually made, um, it's part of uh, Leica Geosystems. So we create a new uh, file using all the same commands that you're used to, and then we use DXF in, selected that, <clears throat> and all of our cross sections are now in CAD. And that pretty much completes our project here. Appreciate you very much watching this, and if you have any questions, reach out. If you like the video, please like it and subscribe to the page. Have a great day.